look, I know the NFL said last week there isn't an outbreak in Cleveland that all of the positives we were seeing and the other people landing on COVID-19 reserve, Chris, were the result of community spread. There's one hell of a community spread going on in Cleveland if this isn't an outbreak in the Browns facility. Well, yeah, I, I, it's a valid point. I mean, I don't know what consists uh, to, to make an outbreak become official, but you know, we've certainly hit the point where we're talking about it. I don't know if it's an outbreak or not, but it's – it's certainly, you know, dancing on that fine line there. And it just it's unbelievable. You know, big blow to this football team. Here they are, you know, what is this, three weeks in a row kind of dealing with this issue down the stretch. And um, gosh, uh, we'll see. I, I hope nothing more happens to where we have a good competitive, no issues with our Sunday night football game. Yeah, it started the day before the Jets game, week 16, a game that the Browns would lose partially because most of their receivers ended up on the COVID-19 reserve list. Hodge was one of them by way of close contact. Now Hodge tests positive. And again, the league's position as of last week, and I don't know if they're going to have a conference call, a media session, if they're going to leak information, they're going to make announcements. I don't know what they're going to do this week, but I've yet to see anything different than the assessment from last week that this is simply the result of, of community spread in the Cleveland area. It feels like something more than that. And you're right, Chris, this is now the third game that it will be a factor for the Browns. They overcame it against the Steelers. They were playing the Steelers JV team for the most part yeah, right. on Sunday. They will be they will be facing the Steelers A++ team on Sunday night with Ben Roethlisberger, TJ Watt, and others who didn't play in Week 17 back on the field. And it's going to be a factor because Kevin Stefanski, who quite possibly, if not likely, will win Coach of the Year, will not be in the building. Mike Prefer, the former Vikings special teams coordinator, who did serve as an interim head coach one night when Mike Zimmer had had eye surgery. Prefer takes over. Alex Van Pelt, the offensive coordinator, will call the plays. It is a different reality. And you get thrust into it, not in a regular season game, in the first postseason game in 18 years. Yeah, that's what's crazy. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's like they can't dodge the, you know, the bad luck bullet here in Cleveland when it comes to football or anything like that. Hey, I thought part of the reason they didn't play their best football last week was probably because you're dealing with COVID. There's practice issues. There's meeting issues. All of those type of things. You thought, okay, they got through that week. They got in the playoffs. They won't, they're out of the woods. They won't have to deal with it again this week. And here they are now. I mean, Mike, we haven't heard anything. They're still going, you know, continuing with practice as scheduled right now. Right. I mean, we're not hearing any closing of the facility because that'll be a big blow to their football team. Hey, it stinks. There's no Stefanski, certainly. But I do think like if you're having practice and he'll be able to watch the meetings and I'm sure they'll zoom him in live to practice, that'll be OK. That'll be fine. Definitely. Now, game day is going to be a different set of you know theatrics and how are they going to figure that out i don't know but i tell you this mike the thing i'm most concerned with more than any of this is joel bentonio joel bentonio is a stud on the offensive line this team is built around their offensive line you know both of their guards are all pro type of players and now you got the steelers who you just talked about it was the jv team last week and they're going to be fresh as hell mad as hell ready to go and now you're missing one of the best football players on your team. I just I feel for the Browns because it's a lot to overcome this week. What's his last name? Betonio. Joel okay. B I thought I heard an I thought I heard an N in I there. I think I might have squeezed. I think I did. I think I said Betonio. <laughs> I think I did. I'm yeah, sure. I think you did twice. <laughs> yeah. I was just checking. Okay. Just, just making sure. Just giving you a chance to rectify the situation. Thank you. Before we move on, according to Pro Football Focus, one sack allowed on 584 pass block snaps this season by Betonio, who has been there for a while now, and it's been a lot longer since before he arrived that the Browns have been in this situation where they're heading to a postseason game. And this really does take air out of the balloon for the Cleveland Browns. When I told my niece, the rabid Browns fan, yesterday what had happened, she texted me a word straight out of the Chris Sims vocabulary. That's the feeling in and around Ohio I like right this now in a response. Lot. <laughs> in response to the in response to the news that the Browns have an issue as it relates to COVID-19. And you mentioned that we haven't heard of the facility closing. Remember, Monday and Tuesday, this was a rule that was implemented after right, Thanksgiving right. and it's continued in place. All facilities are closed after a Sunday game for Monday and Tuesday because of this potential for 
spreading on those days. And on, you know, Sunday is the, the weird when you day. play on Sunday. It's the most dangerous day for spread because you're you're potentially in a cramped locker room if you're the road team. You're potentially traveling if you're the road team. You are traveling if you're the road team. You're you're on the sideline during the game. You're in the game itself. So th- that's that's why there's always that that aftermath. And hey, the Steelers this week, given that they've faced this Browns team that may or may not be in the midst of an outbreak. They have to be wondering what their test results are going to be as they get deeper into the week. We still haven't seen evidence of the virus being transmitted between players of opposing teams on game day, but just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean we won't see it. So these are concerns going forward, and we'll see what happens today. We're back at that point, and we've had it happen three, four times this season where there's the daily crop report for a given team, and we wait to see – how many more positives? Will they be able to practice today? Will they be practicing remotely? Will they not even practice? Will it just be meetings? Will guys be working out on their own Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the three most important oh, work man. days? And it's all being orchestrated now by a special teams coach, not by the head coach. Yeah, that that that's that's brutal. And really, if it comes to that where they can't have practices and do those things, wow. That'll be a big, you know, competitive disadvantage. There there's no doubt. It's playoff football. You want to implement new things into the game plan. You got to expect that Pittsburgh's added new things into their game plan. You know, so to not have walkthroughs practice, wow, is that a lot to overcome? And, you know, no Stefanski, you know, there to call plays and do all that too, Mike. I mean, I, you know, I, I just, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. I mean, in the Browns, if I'm the Browns, I, 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 I don't know. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be trying to figure out, can I get some Kirk Herb Street, you know, bowl game communication thing going to where Stefanski could be at home and still talk to the coaches a little bit and have a feel for the game. I know that's crazy and it's illegal, but I just, that's what I'd be thinking about. Between crazy and illegal, illegal is the more important thing. You yes. can't do that. Right. It's the old Jim Morris cell phone. Yeah, I know I was the there game for that. that. You were part yeah, of back right. in 2005 when he wanted to see what, what his playoff, permutations were so he used a cell phone during a game and paid a huge fine for it and the Browns know very well the penalties that arise from text messages from the general manager in the luxury suite down to the sideline Ray Farmer was on the wrong end of that although I think he took the fall for Jimmy Haslam that's a different story altogether but there's nothing they can do Stefanski is out and Prefer is in and look I, I it's not like of all the guys in the organization that will be incredibly careful about not getting exposed to the virus, it's going to be the head coach. And all the head coach is doing is working and going home and going to bed and coming back and going to work and going home and going to bed and coming back and going to work. They are spending hour, hour after hour after hour in the facility. So I think that that the initial suspicion when the head coach gets it is he somehow got it in the facility, which again raises yep, the question yeah, of right. community spread versus outbreak and and l- let's let's devote a minute or two to how this would play out if there is a decision made that it is the result of an outbreak because an uncontained outbreak chris is the only thing that will cause a game to be postponed well, what happens if decision is made there's an uncontained outbreak and game must be postponed from sunday what do you do? Do you bump it back a day or two? Do you bump it back a week and just shut down the rest of the playoffs and division round weekend? What would have been will now be the last game from Super Wild Card weekend, and then we pick up with the playoffs a week later. They've got that buffer that's still in there that they didn't have to use for a week 18. Right. I just don't know how this would play out, and my guess is they're thinking about every possible scenario – On PFTPM yesterday, Shereen Williams and I kicked around the idea of moving the game to Tuesday, and then the winner plays the next Monday night in the divisional round, and then the winner of that game ends up in a conference championship game the following Monday night. So you go Sunday night, Monday night conference championship games. I mean, we've seen the flexibility that was applied in the regular season. I think we have to be ready for any possible arrangement of dates and times because the league has shown it can do it and will do it, and I think that same flexibility – 
will apply to the postseason if they have to move the game. Well, I, yeah, I mean, hey, they're going to do what they got to do to get it done. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I would have issues with, with some of that. I, I'd be more in favor if they can't play this game this weekend, you stop the whole weekend and you start it next weekend. That, that would be my thing. Nobody plays. Everybody, we are, the whole NFL is off for a week. And then we come back and everybody plays Super Wild Card Weekend together. Then that, to me, lessens the competitive you know, advantage or disadvantage for some football teams there a little bit. You know, the only thing I would be concerned about with that is what? The two teams that are on a bye. You work so hard to get a bye. Now you're going, well, damn, I didn't want to go like bye-bye from playing football like for three weeks before we have to play again. That's a disadvantage to them. So, wow, it would be a whole can of worms opened up if this does happen. I'm really hoping it's not because I want to see these teams at their best. The other thing, too, about moving the entire weekend back by six or seven days yeah. is the idea that that uh, you may have other COVID-19 sure. issues with other teams. There's no guarantee anything is going to be better a week from now. Let me dust off one of the arguments that you made from time to time during the regular season, and I constantly said they're not going to do it, they're not going to do it, they're not going to do it for business reasons. Remember the issue of the forfeit. Right. And huh. during the regular season – I, I, I was very adamant in the idea that the NFL would not declare a forfeit because the NFL had allowed a defect to exist in the official agreements that were negotiated with the NFL Players Association. Specifically, there's nothing in there as to whether or not players get paid in the event of a forfeit. And since a forfeit goes into the official record books as a win and a loss, a 2 nothing score, and you didn't specifically say in the documents that you drafted that would provide for when players wouldn't be paid, that they don't get paid in the event of a forfeit. If there's a forfeit, they still get paid. I think that's one of the reasons why forfeit was never on the table. Now, Chris, yeah, you're talking different. about a different, you're talking about a lot less money. Right. You're talking about a different reality. And, and look, Browns fans, I'm not saying this should happen. I'm just saying postseason versus regular season, it's a different reality. Right. Could the NFL simply say to the Browns, you have to forfeit this game. I, if it gets out of hand, I would be more in favor of that than jumbling the schedule and then making Pittsburgh, you know, of course, okay, again, Pittsburgh for what? The third time this year would be doing everything right, but getting screwed over by another team and have their schedule moved around and everything like that. That I That's what I would be worried about to where, yes, if we have a real outbreak in Cleveland and it's deemed that way, uh, I'm, I am mean, I don't even like saying this out loud, but yeah, if it got to that point, I'd rather see them cancel the game and just go, nope, you lose. I'm sorry, but we're moving on and we're not going to like mess up the whole playoff format and make it a, you know, a disadvantage for one team who's going to have five days to prepare and another team has seven and they're fresh and this one's, you know, dead tired. Uh, I, I would be in favor of that, Mike, if it did get to that scenario. Uh, let, let me let me kick around. Some, well, see, here's the problem. Yeah, it, it's too. You can't put the genie back in the bottle and say Browns out, Dolphins in. You can't do that. No, the Dolphins have already they're scattered. gone. Right. Even the, yeah, right. they're gone. It's done. You you can't. It's it's over. Yeah. It, you're not going to get the band back together at this point, and all of a sudden, just magically get the Dolphins ready to to become. And, and they'd be the what the sixth seed. It, it's just it just it's not. We're 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 thinking out loud here, and we're brainstorming possible scenarios where if the Browns can't go forward, they can at least have a a seven team playoff field in the AFC. But you just can't at this point. That part's done. Uh, bumping the game by a day or two would create issues on the back end for whoever wins that game. Right from a preparation standpoint, and I, I Chris. I think that they're going to do what they've done all year long. This game will be played, and I think they're going to say the game gets played Sunday, and the only way that doesn't happen is if the NFL Players Association rises up and says, BS, this is not community spread, this is an outbreak, and you are not properly assessing the situation, and our players aren't safe in that facility, on that sideline, in that visiting locker room at Heinz Field, on the plane, on the bus, wherever, because they're in the midst of a full-blown outbreak, and uh, you ignored it to try to get the game in. That's the only 
that that's the the fly in the ointment sure. in the damn the torpedoes scenario. And oh, it's not an outbreak. It's not an outbreak when it sure as hell looks like an outbreak. And and I think that's really where we are right now. That's the point that needs to be resolved. Is it an outbreak? Or is all of this the result of community spread gone haywire in Cleveland? Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, listen, I, I can accept that it's community spread. I mean, it, it's going haywire everywhere, right? So it wouldn't be, like, totally crazy to think that. Um, it does seem that it's a little coincidental with all these people. I don't know. I, I, I do find it hard to believe that there isn't something in common here or some common ground. But either way, as we know, this virus, it's tricky. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Sometimes you see people who don't get it. Other people get it, you know, easily. It's, it's all over the place. It's part of our world and we're just going to have to adjust and keep going. But man, I feel for the Browns. And if they, today's a big day, I mean, to see where this goes and to see if they can put in a full week of practice and preparation, um, it's going to be big for this football team to, to get themselves ready for, for a Pittsburgh team that'll be ready to go. I just sent an email while you were talking to the league, asking that question, do we still believe this is community spread or is it now officially an outbreak? Yeah. And we'll see if they respond. Maybe they respond during the next hour and 45 minutes. If they do, I'll give you an update. Sometimes what happens is if they don't want to deal with me, they they ignore me. And then I have to ask again tomorrow if I remember. And, and then they'll ignore me again. And sometimes I have to ask two or three times. And you know what? It works because I move on to other things, and sometimes I do forget. So, uh, well done, <laughs> NFL. I have to Way tie up a, a string around my finger to remind me to follow up on this if they don't give me an answer. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.